Hey, what's up, Reefers? This is Reefer Matt, and this is six tips for SBS success. Starting with number six, sand or no sand. If you decide to have sand in your SBS tank, it's important to keep it clean. Otherwise, detritus will build up and your nitrates and phosphates may increase. I chose to go with Hawaiian black sand for this tank, but I can't say that I recommend it. The reason is, is because it contains iron, because it comes from volcanic ash, and the iron in the sand will go into your magnet cleaner and it can scratch your glass. If you decide to go with no sand, there are a couple things to think about with that as well. The first is if the coral will grow on the bottom, they'll attach to the glass and it'll be hard to remove. Whereas if you have sand, you can easily frag them off. Also, if you decide to have sand, I suggest a sand that's coarser grain, because if you have a fine grade sand, it'll blow around a lot with higher flow. And speaking of flow, that's tip number five, having proper flow. SPS tanks require higher flow, not a direct flow, but more of a random and moving flow around the coral. So you're not blowing directly on the coral, but you're sort of swirling around it and creating a current. In general, you want to see the polyps moving back and forth on the coral, and you don't want to see them standing still in an SPS tank. My favorite Acropora is this solar flare right here, which is an Acropora meliopora, and they have longer polyps as you can see, and I like to see them swaying back and forth in the flow. And don't forget to have that surface agitation as well. This will help remove CO2 out of the water and also introduce oxygen. Paired up with my Kessel lights, this creates that shimmer that I like to see in my tank. I don't have a lot of crazy flow in this tank because I don't have a lot of crazy par. The par is a little under 300, so I don't have to have a ton of flow, but I believe that flow and par should match. So if you have a lot of par, you're going to want a lot of flow. And that leads us to tip number four, proper lighting. SBS corals require lights with a higher par and proper spectrum. This tank currently has a range of 100 par to 300 par from bottom to top. You can go higher than that if you're looking for some crazy colors, but if you're just starting out with SPS corals, I recommend to keep it in that range, especially on the lower range at first, to see how your corals react. This tank started off with black box lights, and they had the proper par and grew coral okay. However, the colors weren't as bright as I wanted them to be, so that's why I decided to go with the Kessels. But most LED lights nowadays will grow SPS just fine. I suggest not succumbing to peer pressure and just buy one within your budget. Alright, time for tip number three. Test regularly. I use the Neptune Trident to test alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium on this tank. Whatever test kit you use, I suggest testing alkalinity daily at the same time every day and testing calcium and magnesium at least every other day. Here I'm testing alkalinity from the SPS frag tank on the HANA alkalinity checker. I always suggest to swirl your reagent to help mix it up before you use it. This video is sped up two times speed so I'm not really shaking it that fast. I'm kind of swirling around in a circle. I already had the cuvette with the tank water previously inserted so there it is right there. I didn't show you that in the video, but here is where I'm showing you where I'm putting the reagent in. So as you're doing this, there's a couple different places you can look on that plunger if you're not familiar with this and, and uh, may not know where to line it up on the zero mark. You actually want to line up the bottom flat part of the plunger with the zero mark when you're drawing it up. The instructions say to gently invert it five times. I do 10. I just do overkill on a lot of things, but uh, at least do it five times, invert it. You don't need to shake it. And always keep your cuvette clean because any smudges on there will affect the reading. Oh boy, it looks like I got some work to do on the frag tank. I like to keep my alkalinity at 8.5. 
And on to tip number two, research your livestock and coral. Certain fish will eat certain corals, especially SPS corals. So it's important to research which fish and which corals you want to put in the tank and also which corals you want to put next to each other and how much room they need in between each other as well. If you see my other videos, it's probably apparent that I'm not really a fish guy. I'm more of a coral guy and the fish are sort of there for uh, utility purposes. So I don't have any like the crazy color angels and that in my tanks uh, because I don't want to chance them eating the coral. So that's just something to keep in mind. And I also suggest making a list of which livestock you want to put into the tank. All right, and it's time for the number one tip. This is the most important tip uh, for an SBS tank in my opinion. This is the one that I tell everybody when they ask me what my secret is for keeping a tank like this. And that is, have patience. Slow is fast. It's true you can cycle a tank in a couple days, but that doesn't mean it's a mature tank. And SBS corals require a mature tank. To give you some background on this tank, I let it cycle for three months before I put anything in it. And after that, I still had coral losses and I had to wait about another five to six months before it was ready. Now that doesn't mean you have to sit there and look at an empty tank. You can still put in fish and other coral if you want. And if you decide to do an all SBS corals, you can always remove those corals that you started with. Most people do a mixed tank anyway, so they'll start off with soft corals and then LPS corals, and then they'll finish it off with SPS corals later on. So that's why I suggest for a beginner reefer is to start with soft corals first. And then as you move on to SPS corals, just start with the easy ones. Most of the corals in this tank are easy SPS corals because that was the purpose. This was my challenge tank to see if I could grow SPS corals. Uh, this tank is now four years old, so as you can see, the corals have grown out. This is Reefer Matt. Thank you for watching, and happy reefing.